You're watching BTS. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to continue the march to Jurassic World 10 days away. We're going to discuss Jurassic Park, The Lost World. We're going to review it a little bit. And just to give you guys a heads up, this is just my normal background. I cannot do any chroma key on this because of my shirt, which I love. <laughs> I think you guys saw the last video. I found the shirt and I said, hey, wear it with your Jurassic Park videos. But anyway, the green just clashes with that green, so it doesn't give me any transparent. Well, it gives me transparency, but it also gives me transparency in my shirt. Tried to work around it, couldn't do it. So we're just going to stick with the normal green screen background when I do my Jurassic Park videos, but wearing the shirt, of course. Let's talk about The Lost World, the sequel to Jurassic Park. A strong follow-up, not as good as the first one. The first one, I think, is always going to hold... A special place in everyone's hearts. Two, now, we know in this movie, we find out that Jurassic Park had a Site B, a secret location where the dinosaurs are thriving. They do not die after a certain amount of time without the necessary resources they need to survive. Uh, they found a way, as, you know, as Ian put it, they found a way. Hammond emphasizes that in the beginning of the movie. And, you know, this movie... Uh, the, one of the best things about this movie is the introduction to some of the new dinosaurs. In particular, the opening, not the opening scene, but when we first see the Stegosaurus just come out. That was a great moment for me. I like the Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus and Triceratops are two of my favorites. And some of the other dinosaurs we got going in. But obviously, the T-Rex and the Velociraptors are the stars of this movie because they provide the fear, the terror, the suspense and that's what also gets people on edge. It's exciting. It's fun. It's scary a little bit. And, you know, this movie provided a lot of that. What what did what it is about this movie that I just had a hard time with was, number one, the cast at the time. Not now. At the time, the cast in this movie is not as strong as it was in the first movie. Now, look, we all know that Julianne Moore now is a star. She's an Oscar winner. Uh, Vince Vaughn now is a big star. He does a lot of comedy. But the cast surrounding Jeff Goldblum, who during the 90s was a big deal, wasn't that strong. It wasn't. It wasn't nearly as strong as the first movie. So, you know, uh, that's one thing that kind of took away. I kind of felt like it was Jeff Goldblum and then everybody else. Uh, also, Julianne Moore, while she's a fine actress, and she's obviously gotten better with time, in this movie, her character just annoyed me too much. She was just a little bit too naive for, for it to be believable. Like, you can't tell me that as exciting as dinosaurs are to see, I think any person in their right mind would be aware of the danger. And she wasn't. How do you just roll up to a Stegosaurus next, nest and then they come charging you, and she's just there like, aha, well, let me duck. You know, <laughs> I, it's little stuff like that. So her character just annoyed me to all high hell. The other thing I had a hard time believing was humans going on a safari hunt for dinosaurs. Now, they made it, they sold it well. Don't get me wrong, they sold it well. Uh, when I look back to the first movie and we think about how they developed the story, how they made everything so believable, I find it just as hard to believe that we could successfully do a safari hunt on dinosaurs. I mean, these guys caught a triceratops, you know what I mean? I, and, and look, it's one thing if you're going out there, you're shooting them and you're killing them. That, to me, is a little bit more believable because you have lethal weapons. These guys were not trying to kill them. You're telling me that you're going to go around catching dinosaurs by throwing these little hooks around their neck? I don't know. For me, I just can't, I can't buy it. It doesn't mean that those sequences weren't cool, and it doesn't mean that uh, it made the movie bad. It just, that just kind of took me out of that element that this world could potentially exist. You know, even though we know it's a movie, and, you know, and again, it doesn't take away. I, look, if we could, sus if we could just dismiss all reality when we watch Star Wars, there's no reason why we can't do it here. But the point I'm trying to make is that when you establish just how real it seemed in the first one with the science, explaining how they did it, showing you how they did it, coming up with a story that seems almost real and feasible, and then you come back and you're telling me, all right, humans are going to hunt dinosaurs. 
And it's not that humans wouldn't. We would do that. Humans would go out there and try to hunt dinosaurs if they were real. I just don't think we could be successful at it unless we're killing them. You go out there with an Uzi or a shotgun, that's one thing. You're going to take a couple of dinosaurs down. But you're going out there with sticks and hooks and <laughs> I don't know. I just couldn't buy it. So that essence took me out of it. A little bit. At least out of the universe a little bit. But that doesn't mean I wasn't any less impressed with the movie. Especially some of the scenes. They kind of amped up the terror a little bit. When they're running through that field and the Velociraptors are sneaking up. Boy, that was just intense. That was intense. And we got a lot more Velociraptors. It was just, it was a lot of fun. Jeff Goldblum really shined in this movie. And to me, he's the one that shined alone. Vince Vaughn had some great moments. Julianne Moore, like I said, was very annoying. Um, the gentleman, and his name escapes me, but the pri the leader of the safari crew who was hunting the T-Rex, he's a very good actor. He's been in tons of stuff, and he was very he was very good as well. But they kind of, the other problem there is that, to me, he kind of portrayed a better villain than Hammond's nephew, yet they took him out of the movie after they were done on the island. Now, story-wise, it made perfect sense. There's no need for him to go on. He did what he came to do. But he was such a such a presence on the film. He was such an, a presence in front of the camera that it was a shame that that it turned out that way. Now Hammond's nephew was a bit of a it was a, a pretty good villain himself, but more so in the beginning. In the beginning, he was very pompous, very cocky. Uh, he just put Ian down. Oh, your your edge. <laughs> this suit costs more than your education. That that you know. That started great. I'm like, wow, I really hate this guy. But later, since you see the other gentleman pretty much pawn him in terms of a hierarchy and in villainy, he takes charge of the camp and all that. It kind of takes that element away. It, take, it takes that hatefulness away from that character, Hammond's nephew. So that's where I kind of was like, all right, well, you know, it's great that it ended the way it did, but I like the other guy. <laughs> so... But again, it doesn't take anything away from the movie too much, you know? It just doesn't make it as good as the first one. And there's a lot of sequels that are not as good as the first one. That's It's, it's always a tough act to follow when the first movie is as good as this one was. But overall, you know, the story was fine. You know, these dinosaurs survived. They find a way. Very ironic when you look back at what Ian said in the first movie. And um, we don't revisit some of the other characters except the kids in the beginning of the movie and Hammond himself in the beginning of the movie. Um, but outside of that, it's all new characters, uh, with the exception of Jeff Goldblum's character. And then, you know, the, the ending was a little bit comical. Like, we have a dinosaur running around the city. <laughs> and, uh, of course, who could forget the nod to Godzilla when the T-Rex is running down the street and the four Japanese men look up and they're screaming. So, but I mean, look, it's a fun experience. We get to see new dinosaurs. That intensity and that terror is still there when the Velociraptors and the T-Rexes show up. That scene with the the big truck, you know, the field wagon, I want to call it, that was a great scene. And I feel bad for the guy who was an all-star saving them, but that ends up getting split in half between the two T-Rexes and consumed. But nonetheless... The other three make it out alive, or the other four, I should say. Well, the little girl was perched up in the in the tree, but, you know, so, and, and that was a great scene. That was a fantastic scene. And the scene where the T-Rex is chasing everybody is another fantastic scene. The terror, seeing him squish people, pick people up, just chew on them. It was, it definitely had its moments. It's not as good as the first one. There's some parts of the movie I just don't find believable. I just don't think without weapons, without lethal weapons... We could successfully capture dinosaur, uh, dinosaurs on a safari. And furthermore, uh, the cast to me just wasn't, with the exception of uh, Jeff Goldblum, obviously, and the other gentleman who played the leader of the safari crew, uh, Engine, I should say. He wasn't the leader of Engine, but Engine hired them to go in and get the dinosaurs. Him, uh, I thought he was a great presence on screen. Outside of that, everybody else just did not grab me the way the, the crew did in the first movie, the, the actors in the first movie. And maybe it was because there was too many characters this time. That's another possibility. But, um, and that's not to say Julianne Moore is not a good actress. She's a fine actress now. But in this movie, she's still young. She's still up and coming. She wasn't quite there yet. And she just, uh, her character was written the way it was written. I personally didn't like the character. I thought she was annoying. Uh, and just too naive. Too naive to be... Just too naive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she's putting the baby dinosaur outside the truck for the T-Rex. And she's smiling. 
Who smiles? If a T-Rex is in front of me, I'm going to shit myself. I'm not going to smile. So just stuff like that is like, really? <laughs> That's like a little bit naive, a little too naive. But look, overall, it, it's fun. It's a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It only further makes me look forward to wanting to see Jurassic World, which is getting great reviews right now from people in Paris that just debuted out there. And other people who've gotten early screenings of it in the world of Hollywood have been praising it pretty highly. A little concerned that the director is not going to be back for the next movie. So I don't know if maybe something happened there. They didn't like what he did or whatever. I don't know. But we'll be the judge uh, in a little over a week as to whether or not this movie is going to follow up well with the others. Or in particular, Jurassic Park. Until then, next week the march continues when we review and discuss... Jurassic Park 3, everyone's favorite. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this review. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news. We just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Join the nation's Facebook page to meet other subscribers or visit ETN's Facebook page and Twitter page. Links for all are in the description.